Hello, Brussels! Thank you so much to all of you who have made it today. It's amazing to see from here the square full of people in support of Julian. And, and all the wonderful banners and yellow ribbons and it, it is just great to see you. Thank you. The reason many of us admire and respect Julian is because WikiLeaks did some amazing things. At the time when um, you know, we were moving to a world where from print media to technology and you know, reading online, which seems normal today, WikiLeaks allowed us to break through from the few oligopolists who controlled the print media, who told us what we can talk about and what we can think about. WikiLeaks allowed us, as allowed the whistleblowers to provide large volumes of data, not like Daniel Ellsberg sitting overnight and photocopying, Xeroxing the, the leaks, but for information to be provided by whistleblowers securely, not just for the security of whistleblowers, but also for the security of the documentation. And that means that WikiLeaks to this day has a 100% record of accuracy. <laughs> WikiLeaks didn't dump data online. They had a range of experts they worked with. People like Stefania Maurizi in Italy, whose words you will hear soon. People like John Sloboda at Iraq Body Count, who told us the true number of deaths in Iraq. People who uh, allowed us, like Andy Worthington, to let us know what really happened at Guantanamo, where 789 Muslim men were taken and abducted without due process in the countries from which they were taken, and who were held without charge or trial for over 14 years, for over 20 years in some cases where children like Omar Khadr, who was 14 and a bit when he was taken to Guantanamo and tortured for over a decade, where the U.S. continued to torture him even after he was set free by trying to, you know, make him in the courts go through a process of lawfare so that he did not have restitution for the crimes. People like Khaled al-Masri, the shame of Europe, a German citizen who was abducted on the Macedonian border and rendited by eight CIA agents, sodomized, tortured. And when they realized it was a case of mistaken identity, they didn't let him go. They continued to torture him. When he was dropped back, on the Albanian border and sent back to Germany. People didn't believe his story. Who believes that you are picked up and taken away and tortured? His family went back to the Middle East where, because they believed he had abandoned them. And it is only through Julian and WikiLeaks that we know the truth that Mr. El Masri got justice to some extent at the European Court of Human Rights. allowed whistleblowers to talk to the likes of the New York Times, the Guardians, the Washington Posts, who have a phenomenal reach but whose attention span is quite small, but also to um, journalists in Tunisia where the information helped spark the Arab Spring, to allow us to know what was happening in Kenya in Daniel Arab Moy's government in terms of corruption, to allow us to know that on the Ivory Coast, Trafigura was dumping toxic waste. So the story of WikiLeaks 
If you are an activist who cares about your brother or sister who is in a care home, your uncle or aunt, your parents, if you care about the COVID crisis, if you care about war, if you care about corruption, if you care about the climate, you should care about WikiLeaks. Because WikiLeaks allowed us to do something we didn't do before. Instead of the state surveilling us, we surveilled the state. And this is why Julian is important. He allowed us to give names to the dead. The, those of you who have seen the collateral murder video, collateralmurder.wikileaks.org has the video, you will see war crimes being committed in plain sight. An innocent civilian who was a good Samaritan trying to pick up men who were shot down, being gunned down to death. It is for the justice for Dua and Sajad, whose father was killed in the collateral murder video, for people like those that we stand here today. We care about Julian, but we also care about press freedom, human rights, and democracy. We care about the right we have to know the crimes that our governments are committing with our money in our name, shamelessly. We shouldn't be having the Honorable Sir Tony Blair. We, sh we shouldn't be having Julian Assange sitting in Belmarsh Maximum Security Prison. The criminals are in the wrong place. attended all the almost all the administrative hearings and the extradition hearings as an observer on behalf of the Haldane Society of Socialist Lawyers and I speak in a personal capacity from those observations. It is not normal to have the extraditing state, the US, known to have conspired to murder the defendant. It is not normal for the extraditing state to have surveilled the embassy where Julian was and to have heard all his privileged legal conversations, which prevents him from having a fair trial either in Britain or in the US. It is not normal for us to allow an extradition process where the chief witness for the FBI is a known convicted serial pedophile and fraudster who admits to fabricating his testimony in exchange for a bribe from the FBI. This is not normal process. This is not justice. The rule of law is intended to hold politicians and the executive to account. In Britain, the rule of law is not working. We have judges who are staying silent right now. My appeal to judges and lawyers is to speak up, because if not, we have a very clear memory of those who said we are only doing this as a job, and who were complicit in serious and grave torture. It is not normal for international law to be ignored in this way, for the UN to find that Julian has been arbitrarily detained, and for Britain and Sweden to ignore it. It is not normal for the UN Special Rapporteur, the great Niels Meltzer, to find that Julian has been tortured, and for Britain to not even investigate it. It is not normal for the second superseding indictment in the case to be delivered halfway through the trial, and for new charges to be brought whenever they like, and for a journalist to be expected to be sent to the US to face 175 years stuck in a hellhole where he will be allowed to speak to his family for two 15-minute slots a month monitored by the FBI. This is not normal. 
He should not be extradited. Julian is a hero. It is our time to assert our power because if we do not claim this power, they will not speak up. It is your time, and I'm so glad you are here and speaking up to free Assange. Thank you for your solidarity. Please stay strong. Please speak to other people. Please put pressure on people like Priti Patel and Boris Johnson who may not listen to reason, but who care about the sound from the streets. Gareth Pierce always says that the fight is 50% in in court, but 50% in the court of public opinion. And we know what that